Hello and welcome to the tutorial on how to automatically slew the Schval to a data link target. Uh, I'm going to have this kind of in two parts, this tutorial. Um, the first part I'm going to do this uh, slewing technique with an AI given data link target and the second it's going to be a manually data link target. And I'm going to show you the difference basically in the accuracy that you get. So. Um, the sources of daily link targets, ones that you put manually and, and from other players online that are wingmen. Um, when you have, when you're in a mission, for like, for example, the mission I'm in right now, it's the Georgian oil campaign. It's mission number one. You're given one wingman. So if I send my wingman and he gives me daily link targets, um, the targets he's going to send me are not going to be 100% accurate. So the coordinates that I get for the daily link target, if you're to center on them 100%, um, there's not most likely you're not going to see a target right in the center of your shawl. Um But if you were to set a data link target yourself, or another player set a target by locking a target, you're when you do this technique of of um, slewing your shawl to it, you will basically you'll be looking right at the target. You'll be ready to lock them. If it, Sometimes you might have to use to move your shawl around a little bit just to get a better lock because it's set based on your point of view when you when you set it. So like if it's it's setting a GPS t coordinate, not a target coordinate, and it's it, it, I'll cover it a little bit later in this tutorial. So right now I'm hovering out here just a couple, uh, probably four or five kilometers outside of a target area where there's some stuff going down. And I'm going to send my second wingman, or my only wingman, out to do a reconnaissance for two kilometers. And when he finds a target, he's going to report it to me. And then when he starts sending the data link information, an alarm of, of an audible alarm will alarm. And there will be some text that displays here saying receive data link target. Um, the target type and wingman 2 will start blinking so if the target is um, so, okay so he's about to send me some information so he's found armor so we'll see a diamond blinking and wingman 2 will start blinking so he just found a target right here and he's blinking same thing up here diamond blinking 2 is blinking so he's gonna send me some another armor target so this will go away and it just went away and now he's sending me this information. So the thing about this is the um, the data link information when you're receiving it, it's, it comes in as like a stack or a queue. You don't you don't have to actively be um, receiving this into your Avris. You can you can wait until he's done scouting and then you can just receive it all, basically. So he found an air defense. He's gonna send me air defense. So these aren't integrated into my Abris yet. So I need to actually receive this information. So this, so the first thing he's sending me is the air defense. So if I look up here, the air defense lights blinking and wingman T's blinking, all I gotta do is click send to memory. So I sent that to my Abris. And now the tank is blinking and T's blinking. And if I look down here, there's the air defense, it's solid now. And here's this tank that was selected last. So if I click send to memory again, now he's solid, and uh, we have that first tank he found is blinking. I'm going to do that one more time, and it should not blink anymore. So now I have some targets to work with. Um, I'm going to use the closer tank, tank number two, and also glass tank number two, because then I can demonstrate how to cycle through targets also. Um, so basically, to select a target on your Abris, you will just click cycle through the uh, the type of target it is. So we have two tanks out there. So if I click it once, it'll select the first tank. It'll select the diamond with a one with it. If, you, if I click it again, this button, it'll select the diamond with the two in it. And if I click it a third time, it'll select the diamond with a three with it if we're there. So if I look here, I clicked it once, the diamond with a one and it's blinking. We want diamond with a two. So I'm gonna click it again. Diamond with the two is blinking. So I've selected the target. <clears throat> So now we've selected the target, and that's the uh, first step. The second step is to um, make sure your shawl is shawl and targets are reset. There's a button 
Um, I'll probably put it in an annotation or something. But when you, so, so like if I were to uncage my shawl right now, let me do that. It's looking up at the sky. So that's what happens when you normally uncage your shawl. It's looking straight ahead. And if I, you know, I can pan it around. So the next step, if it's already out, you need to just reset it. So if, you'll see, I'll just reset it. It's reset. I have the the tapes and everything back. That's the next step. And if if you don't if you don't do it at this point after you selected the target, I've had it kind of screw screw up on me. So like if I were to reset it and then select the target, it would um it wouldn't always automatically slew. I'd have to uh, reset it again and then do the next step. Which the next the next step is after you've reset your shawl. So so first step is you select your target, reset your shawl. And the third step is click this data link ingress button right here. And when I click it, the number one will go away and data link ingress will be lit. So that target is set now. So if I were to uncage my shawl now, it automatically slews to the coordinates of that data link point. And as you can see, there's no tank there. And this tank running around I think is part of the um, the mission, uh, they're my allies pushing up down this road. So this isn't the tank he's talking about. Actually, I can see the tank, which is right here in this corner. So if I were to turn on my laser, which it is, um, and and laze this, you'll see, if I can get a good view here, you'll see I'm looking right at the center of that data link point. So I'm I'm looking exactly at the coordinates he sent me. He just didn't send me the best coordinates that he could have. There's the tanks over here, not right here. So that's just one of the caveats with using the AI wingmen. So like you know you could easily just slew this over and and lock this guy and shoot and take him out. But um, what I'm gonna do actually is I will use this tank for my next po next part. Um, so I, I will demonstrate also. Actually, another um, thing I'll show is if I were to, so when I um, uncage my shawl, it went, it went like right here on the, when I uncage my shawl, it was at this point. So if I reset it and were to uncage it again, it'll go right back to that point. You know, it'll always go back to that point if I, because the reason it's doing it is because this is still active. If I were to click this and reset my shawl and uncage it, it's going to be pointing at the sky. So while you have that data link, once you get that set up and you have that data link ingress button pushed, I already, you know, it, it's active, you'll be able to constant, consistently send your shawl to a target area. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset this and I'm going to delete this. Um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to select that tank again, download ingress, and then uncage my shawl. And then back up those points, and I'm going to designate this tank as a target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock on the base of them, because basically you're you're locking onto um, coordinates. I'm going to lock on the base. So I'm now locked on, and this is how you enter a data link coordinate of a of a like a vehicle. I could so I could I could just as easily set a point on the ground and he doesn't have to be locked like I could I could point just in front of him but I'm going to I like to just for purposes just to have him locked when I do this because because sometimes you're you'll drift around if you're not in a hover and you know while you're doing all this entering a data link point you might your um, little box here might drift off to to the side a little bit and it won't be as accurate so I'm going to deselect this and basically to enter a data link point, I'm gonna, going to, here let me zoom in my map a little bit. I'm going to hit the tank button and sit, click send to memory. And that just created a new data link target. So it created data link target number three. So here we go, I've created a new data link target. It looks like they're right on top of each other, which they almost are. And if I were to reset this and select one, two, three, Download Ingress, and make sure I'm reset 
before I do this, so I click my reset button, enslave it, or uncage it, I should say. So there, so that's an example of, sometimes this gets a little finicky. There we go. Yeah, you might have to reset your, um, I, I just noticed this, sometimes you might have to reset your fall a couple times. So as you can see, it went right to the tank. So if I were to, if I were to reset this again, and set, set it, un, uncage it again, it'll go right back on the tank. So, if I were to, one thing is like, you know, let's say you're 10 kilometers out and you see these tanks and you, there's some anti-air or something, you probably want to do like a, you know, you run up, you shoot a missile and you go, go away, you turn around, you might want to do attack runs instead of just be hovering in one spot shooting targets. And when you're doing, when if if you you can't lock a target from from ten uh, kilometers away, or nautical miles away, and one of the things with this is you can you can lock that point in your, so you can easily just reset it and bring it back. You can easily just switch between these just by resetting your shawl and bring it back. So. Um, so now I have that set, I could just easily uh, set up like a, like an attack run on them if I wanted to. So like I could, you know, disengage my hover. All I need to make sure is that light, that downward ingress, is, as long as that's depressed, those points are set. So if I were to go up here and maneuver around a little bit, I should be able to quickly acquire him as a target. And this makes things a little simpler because, like, you know, you're not always going to be looking at a target. Like here, I'm going to turn, you know, let's say I'm maneuvering. He's not in the, the cone in front of me that my shawl normally would be looking at. So let's say you, you, you're you you're looking at some targets. You have targets acquired, and you need to reposition because you're getting a lot of anti-air or something. You need to find a new position. This, this just increases your mobility. That's all it does. So now I've I've changed my position, and you'll see it's not going to be exactly on them, but it'll be pretty close. So if I uncage my shawl now, it's pretty close. See, I it's not a hundred percent accurate, but basically it's good enough. So, anyways, this was just a quick tutorial on how to. Uh, automatically slew the shawl to a day length target. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.